Hey guys, what's up? Sarah here. Welcome to my channel. If it's your first time checking it out, please think about hitting that subscribe button down below if you guys enjoy my planty content. Welcome back to all my other subscribers. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here again today. I really do appreciate it. All right, you guys, so we are at a little bit of a different place. I'm actually at the beach with my husband and my baby. It's cold today and <laughs> Dallas is taking a nap like right here. I'm just out on the balcony and I got my little cozy blanket. So I figured while I had a few minutes, I wanted to do like a sit down and chat with you guys type video. I have not done one of these in a really long time and my mind was just racing last night and I wrote a bunch of notes down on my phone that I'm going to be referring to. But basically what I wanted to talk with you guys about was all the things that I've learned since plant collecting okay so I have been collecting plants for a few years now and yeah I've learned quite a few things just in my personal journey and I hope that you guys will be able to relate with some of these things that I'm gonna talk about all different types of stuff okay so like I said I have a bunch of notes on my phone about all the different things that I've learned that I kind of want to talk about and touch base on I guess this would be kind of like we're coming to the end of the year you know kind of rounding up this year so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up my notes right now and I guess I'm gonna start kind of going through it's a little bit sporadic okay I, this I was up feeding the baby last night like I don't know what time and I was just writing a bunch of stuff down so this may be a little bit all over the place Okay, so one thing that I have definitely learned along my plant collecting journey is to not freak out about pest and to identify and learn the different types of pests and how to treat them that was like a huge one for me i know that when i first started collecting i honestly did not have any paint plant pest <laughs> i can't talk um for a really long time okay i did not have any pests for a really long time and then all of a sudden one day like i did not know what was going on i came into my plant room there was a leaf completely covered in webs with spider mites just like attacking it crawling all over and i completely freaked out it used to give me such anxiety because number one they're pests they're bugs okay and that's just gross anyways to think about having any type of pest or bugs in your house but once you learn them and how to treat them and all that stuff, it's really not that big of a deal. And to not try, try not to stress yourself and freak out about it because I know that I did that for a really long time and it's useless. Just learn how to treat them and you'll be able to take care of them and it's not that big of a deal. So if I could definitely tell my beginner plant collecting self would be not to freak out about plant pest. Oh my gosh, why can I not say that? And just to chill out a little bit about it, just learn about it, like, you know, just simple things like wiping down your leaves, checking really good when you bring a plant into your home from a big box store or any type of place, you know, do the maintenance to prevent pest, all that type of stuff. So that is definitely something that I've learned um, since I first started plant collecting and I wish I could tell myself, chill out. Okay. It's not a big deal. Okay. So something else I definitely want to talk about is I first started collecting plants and it was spring and there was, you know, like beautiful plants in all the big box stores and I didn't have a big collection. I wanted one of everything and it was just really exciting and wonderful. And I had plants out on my front porch and it was just so exciting. And then winter came. I had no idea. I just did not comprehend when I first started collecting the different seasons which hello plants are alive it makes sense I know but I just didn't think about it and I seriously had winter blues and completely felt like a failure because so many of my plants were not growing or thriving or doing good they weren't pushing out any new growth so yes I've definitely learned the hard way <laughs> dealing with winter that it's just part of it again not to freak out and have anxiety about it and all this stuff but yeah I felt like I was doing a really bad job I didn't know how to take care of my plants which in the beginning you really don't even now I kill plants it's just part of plant collecting but yeah definitely not to freak out when seasons change and you aren't seeing that growth or plants are just like you know stagnant that's one thing another thing that goes along with winter is 
I made the mistake of not moving certain plants that have sensitive leaves away from windows and drafts and I did end up with some cold damage. So I know in particular my philodendron micans, I had it out in my sunroom pressed up right against a window and a door and we had some cold nights and it got a lot of cold damage and there's nothing you can do to go back from that. So that is definitely something that I've learned is to pull your plants away from the windows in winter time to prevent cold damage. Okay, so one thing that is a plus for me since I'm an underwater is you don't have to water your plants as much in the winter time. I did not realize this, okay? I had to figure this out the hard way and I overwatered a couple plants because I'm in the live in the south and they need to drink so quick especially the ones on the front porch or my sunroom um yeah they just soak up the water so when winter came i kept watering them and i'm like what's going on you know i just i didn't learn the signs okay I did not learn the signs that would be something else i definitely want to talk about is learning the signs this is something i did not know okay every single thing that i'm going to talk to you guys about is things that i've had to figure out for myself and if you're new to plant collecting i know i have a lot of variety of people on my channel um of subscribers some are new some are like pros more than me okay i don't claim to know everything i'm just sharing my experience on the internet so learning the signs of your plants what are your plants telling you i had no idea when i first started plant collecting what an underwater plant looked like, what an overwater plant looked like, very similar, what <laughs> it needs, okay? I can look at a plant now in my collection and pretty much tell, you know, it's droopy, it needs a drink. It's this, it needs that. The leaves are soft, it needs a drink. I had no idea of the signs of what your plants need and that just comes over time with plant collecting. You will start to learn, just like you'll learn the plants you're not into, um, you will start to learn the signs of your plants and also doing research about them. If you have a plant you're not sure about, learn about them. That's what the internet's for, okay? Look up a video of someone else who's maybe more experienced than you and you can learn so much from <gasps> a squirrel. <laughs> You can learn so much from the internet. Um, I, that squirrel made me lose my train of thought. But anyway, something that I have learned since I first started is it's okay to have a collection that does not have rare plants, okay? It's really hard because you see all these like fancy rare plants and seeing them on Plantstagram, whatever you want to call it, uh, the internet, YouTube makes you want those plants. I understand that because I definitely get inspiration or see plants that I want and put on my wish list and things like that. But not let that define your collection. If you have a collection like me that is majority common plants like pothos and philodendron, um, it's okay. You can still have joy in your plant collection with common house plants. You do not have to have a bunch of rare plants, okay? My sunroom is completely filled with very common plants that you buy from Lowe's, Home Depot, any type of big box stores, and I love it. I think it's beautiful, it brings me joy. I think my sunroom is really, really pretty, and it just gives me the jungle vibes, and I really enjoy it. So you do not have to have a bunch of rare plants to get into plant collecting so you should not feel bad about it at all and there was a while when i didn't even want to start my channel because i was like i don't have any of these fancy plants um rare plants but i call them fancy plants <laughs> i don't have any fancy plants what am i going to talk about who cares about seeing pothos or you know a fern or really just common things that everybody can have who wants to hear about that who wants to see that all that stuff that is not true, okay? People watch you because they're into you and like you and want to hear what your experience is with plant collecting. So my experience is I have a bunch of common plants and I have always talked about my very common plants from the very beginning of my collection. Like I said, that is what got me into plant collecting. It wasn't these fancy, rare, special plants that you have to spend hundreds of dollars on. I literally have just started getting into plants that cost a little bit more and I've gotten them from friends okay for trades if you spend a lot of money on expensive plants that's on you cool I just have not had the ability to do it and especially now that I have a child I have other priorities and I can't just go drop you know $300 on an expensive plant so do not feel bad 
if you only have common plants like i said that is what i started with and i love so many common plants don't feel bad about it but i definitely had to learn that and i would have started my channel way before i did if i wouldn't have been influenced by the internet and feeling like my collection is subpar in comparison and i don't have all these plants nobody's gonna want to watch it all this stuff so if you have common plants i'm right here with you they are just as beautiful and you can have a wonderful collection with common plants you don't have to have the rare things so don't feel bad another thing that i feel like i you know had to learn is when to take advice from the internet and when not to okay so it's really important and good to do research and obviously look things up but there is a lot of misconceptions out there and things that you know like i don't know putting rocks underneath the soil to help with drainage or do not plant a pot do not plant a pot do not plant in a pot without a drainage hole whoo guys words are hard today um that's something that i definitely had to learn and now i actually like pots that don't have drainage holes i use them as catch pots and it's good for me because i can just go around put a little bit of water in there and i don't have to worry about the water spilling out or bottom water with it so yes the things on the internet don't always align with your plant collecting journey and you're gonna have to figure that out for me as well like you know you hear all over the internet <laughs> don't repot freaking out don't repot don't repot it's winter time you can't repot your plants i personally repot all year round um it's good for me in the winter time to be able to like catch up on some plants that need repotting that i didn't get to because so many other things are going on in spring and summer so yeah i do repot all year yeah i think it's fine you just have to learn the cues of your plant and the signs and realize that you know some plants if you repot them they may freak out but honestly i have good experience with repotting all year round so that's another one of those internet things you're just gonna have to kind of figure out for yourself of whether or not to take internet advice compared to what works for you i don't know you guys i feel like this video is not making sense like i am just babbling all over the place so another thing that i have learned is not to just buy a plant just to buy a plant okay if that makes sense when i first started collecting like i said i wanted one of everything and i would just go to lowe's or home depot or whatever and i would just come home with any plant just because i wanted a plant whether it was like three dollars or ten dollars or you know fifteen dollars whatever it's justifiable because i'm like it's only four dollars which it's true but you've got to learn what types of plant fit your lifestyle okay calatheas do not fit my lifestyle like i said i'm an underwater begonias do not fit my lifestyle because i'm underwater hoyas and philodendrons fit my lifestyle so i had to learn that the hard way just from killing plants um yeah killing them basically and realizing that they stress me out it's not worth it to me my environment whatever it may be so i definitely had to learn that the hard way and figuring out what plants to bring into my home. I am at a different stage in my journey where before I just wanted a million plants and to have a total jungle vibe. Now I want to get a plant because I absolutely love it and I really want it and it speaks to me. I know that sounds crazy but yeah it speaks to me and uh, not just to buy it just to shop. You know what I mean? Not just impulse buys. All right, sorry if it's a little louder. The air conditioning to the house just turned on, so I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna keep on going. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear me good. Um, another thing that I've learned since I started plant collecting is to not jump on the plant trends, okay? No offense to you. If you guys love the little plant trends, that's fine. You do you. I'm just talking about me personally. Um, Pilea peppermoides was one that was really big when I first started I guess really collecting i had house plants before that and was into it but discovered the internet world and you know youtube instagram plantstagram whatever you want to call it and pilea was a really big one and i fell for it okay i totally fell for it i ordered one off of amazon for like 20 dollars, and it's this big and never grew for me and i didn't like the plant i just thought it was cool it was all over the internet and everybody had them to the point where I almost named my channel and my Instagram planting pilea. Thank God I did not because I do not like pilea. But, you know, that's just one of those things. Um, you got to learn the hard way just to not jump on the plant trends because a lot of times 
they're just what they are trends and they're gonna die down and plant prices are gonna go down the same is like for the Birkin or the Raven ZZ or all these other plants that are you know the hype it plant that people will pay a bunch of money for when if you just wait a while they'll usually become more readily available and drop in prices. So that is definitely something I've had to learn. Another thing that I've learned since I started plant collecting is you don't have to spend a bunch of money on plant accessories, whether that be plant stands, pots, whatever, baskets, thrift for them. Oh, I think that was a squirrel. That was a squirrel behind me. <laughs> thrift for them, you guys. You don't have to spend outrageous money on pots, okay? Pots are really expensive. I understand if you want to spend some money on like a beautiful ceramic handmade pot, something like that, but you don't have to spend like $20 a pot. Literally, if you go to Salvation Army, Goodwill, any of the places you can thrift, I get all my pots thrifted pretty much. And when I'm out thrifting, I'll just pick them up and then I have them on hand for like 50 cents a dollar 99 and the same thing for plant stands i have so many plant stands and plant accessories whatever from the thrift store so that is definitely something i learned because when i first started collecting i really wanted cute pots but i didn't want to spend the money i wanted to spend the money on the plants instead of the pots so yes that's definitely something i've learned you don't have to spend a bunch of money to make your plant collection look cute with cute little pots and stuff you just have to thrift for them <laughs> the squirrels are going crazy in the palm trees behind me so if you hear any more noise that's what it is something else i want to touch base on would be plant burnout i guess that's what i'm going to call it i have been through so much with this like up and down and it's definitely in line with my mental health and anxiety um whatever that looks like so basically there's two types of ways i can look at it sometimes when i have anxiety and i'm really stressed out and i just need to like check out i go in my plant room and i water and it's so therapeutic for me and it just brings me back down and i feel really really productive and i like taking care of something and it's really good for my mental health especially living out in the country not having any friends nearby that's what really got me into plant collecting in the first place um and it just became a really joyful hobby but the other side of that is the plant burnout and i have experienced this like i said it's a it's a wave okay and i've experienced this quite a few times the plant burnout and it's where it could be anything like your plants have pests um you don't have the time to care for them um they're not doing well so you're not as interested in them um you are just completely overwhelmed with the size of your collection and you don't have the passion or the excitement or whatever it may be and it's scary definitely the first time you experience this because you're like okay i spent money on plants and i've made this a huge part of my life do i not like plants anymore just because you are you know have anxiety being overwhelmed or depressed or whatever it may be but just know for me and my personal experience that has always passed so after a few days or a couple weeks whatever it may be i get the spark back and i start finding joy in it and it helps alleviate my anxiety and stress and stuff like that but it is crazy you guys i never would have ever thought that i would experience this wave with plant collecting when i first started i just thought oh they're plants you know whatever and another level to that is definitely because i put myself out on the internet and that's a whole another thing we're going to get into the internet world but um yeah i definitely have learned that to be kind to myself and realize that it is going to pass the plant burnout does pass for me every single time and like i said it's always in line with my mental health and it can be a good thing for your mental health as well so it's a roller coaster uh just hang on for the ride i never would have ever thought that i would experience emotional stuff collecting <laughs> house plants so i guess something else i want to talk about is putting yourself out on the internet the good the bad the ugly um i guess a good thing would be that i've met so many awesome people and you guys all know who you are if i talk to you on a daily basis or weekly basis or whatever i have truly met real friends like it is so crazy i talk to my internet friends sometimes more than i talk to my friends that you know i have in real life not that 
y'all aren't real life you know what I'm trying to say um so that's something really really good that I felt like I was missing like I said I live out in the country and as you get older like it's just really hard to make new friends so having a hobby that you both have in common is a good starting point and I just love you guys all my friends <laughs> so that is something that's really positive um so something that it's that I've learned since plant collecting is if you put yourself out there on the internet whether you have a YouTube channel or Plantstagram or whatever people are going to want your plants okay complete strangers people you've maybe interacted with you are gonna have people just straight up ask you for plants that you have in your collection whether they're nice rude not and when I first started collecting um, a lot of times maybe I wouldn't have a ton of communication with a person but I would just agree to do a swap because I don't know I knew they wanted a plant that I had and I wanted to share and I have shared so many plants and I really did enjoy doing swaps in the beginning of my plant collecting journey and I do think it's a really great way to get rare plants if that's what you want um that's how I have gotten a lot of my special plants is what I call them I don't like to say rare but the plants that are more special to me than just you know my average pothos or whatever is through trades but I'm at the point now where I maybe will trade with like one or two people that you know we have an ongoing rapport and it's easy and that's just how I do it I don't just do a bunch of random trades with a bunch of people if you do that cool that's that's on you I found that I was always really giving to people and wanting to share and stuff like that and I love that but a lot of times there's a hassle that comes along with that with like packing things and shipping things and all that stuff and feeling obligated like I had to share a plant with a person. So now I just say no I'm not interested or no I'm not going to cut my plant and send it to you just because it's a plant you want that you don't have and you have the balls enough to ask me for it over the internet. No. And it's it is really rude. Okay. It is really rude. <laughs> it, it is. If you have a relationship with a person and you talk to them on a regular basis it is not rude but if we do not have a rapport at all and you ask me for a plant it is very rude do not do it and I find it insulting that people just see something that you have and will send you a message over the internet or ask you for a plant it's crazy so I have learned since I started plant collecting to just say no just say no to all the internet people I say no it doesn't matter it just if you offend a person oh well they're rude for even asking you in the first place it's they really are so another thing that I've learned since I started my YouTube channel is to not get offended by mean or weird comments when I first started you guys I used to get so offended when people would leave me mean comments I really would be pissed off about it and how dare they think this or that you're putting yourself out on the internet you're putting yourself out there for critique whether you want it or not whether you're asking for it or not just putting yourself out on the internet you are going to get the crazies okay and I'm very fortunate that in the plant community I really haven't experienced it too much but I have gotten some off the wall comments okay and I get comments all the time about my intro with the cat chewing the exotica leaf that I'm gonna kill my animals and all this stuff about you know how I'm gonna kill my pe my pets and I'm gonna poison them and you know it's it's not true okay since I started plant collecting I have definitely learned how to keep my plants safe and <laughs> safe safe from my cats and my cats safe from my plants but you know a lot of things on the internet are Mm, they say they're from a place of concern but sometimes it's just I didn't ask for your advice so why are you giving it um so yeah learning to let go of mean comments and I just kind of laugh about them now you know you took the time to watch my video you want to thumbs down it fine if you don't like it you don't have to subscribe to me <laughs> I don't care um you want to leave a mean comment I'm going to block you remove your comment or you know give you an answer back that is basically like well that's what you think fine but here's my reasoning and yeah it used to offend me <laughs> but I don't anymore and I just basically laugh at it so that's how I know I've definitely matured <laughs> matured in my um YouTube journey I guess uh, another thing that I've learned since I started plant collecting is that I guess the community community as a whole overall is pretty good but everyone in the community is not great okay 
everyone in the community is not great and I have definitely learned that the hard way thinking that all these people were my friends and everyone was my friend and just because I support all their channels and this and that you know they'll support me and my channels no that is not how it works okay everyone in this community is not great and grand just like every community whether it be the makeup community anything okay it's not all grand and take it with a grain of salt <laughs> okay if you've had a grand experience good for you overall i have had a great experience but i've learned things um about people and creators and all types of stuff it is not all grand and i'm okay with that i just want to put out content that i feel like is positive and yeah that's it so something else that i've learned definitely the hard way is there is plant clicks okay I used to get offended by it that I wasn't maybe included in something or I supported another creator's channel and they didn't support me but now I'm happy to say that I am pretty much a lone wolf now there is definitely people that I associate with that are my truly my friends but I don't just kiss big youtubers asses to um make it I guess in this community grow my channel or whatever you want to call it I don't do that okay and I'm not down for it and I see so many other creators doing this um and if they're friends with the other person fine that's great but there's definitely clicks okay and I'm cool with being a lone wolf okay I take pride in it and I'm fine with that it used to offend me but definitely does not any more so there is definitely other plant channels that I don't vibe with um no hate or anything like that I just don't um I'm not into like drama tea type things anything like that I feel like you know keep your opinion to yourself I am highly opinionated okay about a lot of different things I just choose not to share it on the internet and what I choose to put out is just you know positive non-drama uh, you, you aren't going to see me in any type of drama, okay? It's not worth the anxiety and the effort, all that stuff. And along the lines of what I choose to share and don't share the same thing, I'm not going to get on some type of debate with you over something. If I'm going to deba debate a person about something, it is not going to be over the internet, okay? It's going to be people that I encounter in my everyday life or my friends or family or whatever and have real conversations. It's not worth the effort, okay, to fight over the internet with a person. It's just not my jam. And if you have time for that and that's your thing, cool go on but yeah i've definitely learned that it's not it's not my jam i have no desires at all to be a part of any type of drama or tea or anything like that and yeah not for me <laughs> okay so something else that i've learned about the youtube type community um is i don't really watch that many plant tubers anymore now the people that i do watch like I said, are my friends or I do interact with them. I have a rapport with them and I truly enjoy watching their channel. I used to watch so many plant tubers and I felt obligated to just comment on every video and like and support and all this stuff. And that's not the case anymore. I really don't do it. Number one reason why I don't do it anymore is I feel like it bogs down my creativity and I feel like I can't do something because another plant youtuber has already done it so <laughs> I've definitely learned that the hard way because I would feel really bad like I have an idea that I want to do something and then I would watch another plant tuber and see that they've done it so I just don't really watch many plant tubers anymore I honestly have a probably could count on one hand how many that I truly do watch or interact with um, that I find interesting and that are my friends and I want to show support and stuff like that I do not just comment on a million people's channels anymore and try to support them and all this stuff if I'm not getting that in return um, or we don't have a you know ongoing report I'll watch someone's video because I find interest in it and entertainment just like why you guys I hope would watch my channel for entertainment so yeah I've learned that the hard way because I used to just feel like oh my gosh this person already did making a moss pole or this person already did this or that there's only so much you can make a video on about plant collecting and we are going to make multiple videos on the same thing but if there is going to be multiple multiple videos out there i don't want to watch someone else's video and it you know bog up my own personal creativity so that is something that definitely has changed for me since i first started plant collecting that i keep plant youtube 
watching to a minimum. Okay, so I have a couple more things on my list that are kind of like plant hacks, but I'm thinking about doing a plant hack video on its own and showing some more of my like, you know, plant hacks that I use or do. So I'm probably going to save those. I feel like this video is already going to be really long and I got on a chatty tangent for a minute. So something else that I've definitely learned since I first started my channel or plant collecting would be I wish I wouldn't have put myself in such a planty box okay I feel like I have so many other interests um whether that be like I don't know hair and beauty or cleaning or shopping grocery shopping and hauls like just so many other things that I'm interested in that I would like to share with you guys but I feel like I put myself like I said in a little planty box and all I can share is plant content so along the lines of that um something that I've learned is I wish I would have named my channel something different differently wouldn't have put myself just in this box that it would have been more of a overall channel but plant collecting got me into YouTube and I'm happy it did like I said I've made so many internet friends I'm really happy that I have met you guys and have your support and I just love sharing my journey with you guys and now that I'm a mom I feel like I want to share other things that I can't on this channel so I wish that yeah, I wouldn't have put myself in such a box that I could be doing other things on my channel as well. But I feel like because I've named it and branded it type planty, you know, channel that I have to stay in this box. And yeah, that's definitely something that I've learned the hard way. I wish I wouldn't have done. But along those lines, I was wondering, would you guys be interested in following me if I made a second channel for like motherhood vlogs lifestyle whether that be cleaning like just anything okay anything else um leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys would be interested in following a second channel now i am very sporadic on uploading on this channel i know so i wouldn't want to take away from this but i have so many other things that i'm already doing that i would be interested in filming for a second channel so let me know in the comment section down below if you made it to the end of this video and you guys would be interested in seeing some other things from me um yeah there's other stuff that i just want to share but i feel like like i said i put myself in a box and i can't share it on this channel so let me know in the comment section what you guys think anyways this has been a very long rambly video i don't even know what this has turned into <laughs> All the different things I've learned since starting YouTube, plant collecting, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, I'm sure I'm going to think of a hundred more, but I just kind of wanted to sit down while I had a few minutes and do a little chatty video with you guys. Like I said, I haven't done one of these in a really long time and I just felt like hanging out with you guys, chatting while the baby's taking a nap. Um, also, sorry if there's background noise. I cannot help that. Um, yeah, I really wanted to sit outside. That is not my dog. Okay. That's not my dog barking. My dog is good. He does not bark. That's the neighbor's dog. Thank you guys so much if you made it to the end of this video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys can relate what you think about this video. Did I overshare? Maybe, possibly, but I'm learning to let go of that. You know, same thing for me, just coming on, putting myself on the internet, whatever state I'm in, whether I have my hair fixed, makeup done. I don't even care, you guys. This is me and my everyday life. If you guys act like you have yourself 100% put together all the time, you're lying, okay? So I'm trying to be a little bit more real, all right? Coming on here, looking hot mess. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back at you guys again soon with another video. Bye!